Uh, and now it is time for the final jest of the night. Um, we don't um, we don't have the name. It's not on the PDF, but the film is The Fox, and we're assuming it's Kate Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Oh, not too bad. Can we just wait? We just need a quick question. Are you Kate? Yes, I am. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Your name wasn't on our little PDF, and I was just like, I don't know. Um, I'll get it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. You guys look wonderful. Oh, thank you. Much. So do you. Um, thank you. Would you like to tell us about your film? Uh, it is about an uh, Australian Korean woman who inherits her childhood home, and it's about grief and guilt and regret. But it's a ghost story, so there's Ooh. ghosts and there's prosthetics and there's blood and all that fun <sighs> stuff. I love mm. ghosts and prosthetics and blood. I'm into it already. I like grief. What? <laughs> <laughs> what made you want to explore like the concept of Greek grief even through ghosts? What 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 made you choose ghosts as your your medium? Um, I've always really loved ghost films, ghost stories, the supernatural. I think it's really fun. Um, and so I I'm not even sure I was drawn to the grief aspect of it. I think I was more drawn to the vengeful spirit side of it. I think I really liked this idea of people being able to come back and get revenge. So I, was, I think I was more drawn to that side of this specific ghost story. Um, and I took a lot of inspiration, obviously, from Korean horror films. Um, and I think that's where that archetype uh, really comes from, uh, Japanese Korean horror films. Oh, that's really cool. And how how did you kind of take those ideas um, and kind of make them your own to fit them into your story that you wanted to tell? Um, so this film was actually made as part of my master's degree. So I think when you're looking at, when you're studying and looking at other national cinemas and other national stories, I think research is really important. I think you've got to read everything. You've got to watch everything. I was really excited to get to work with Ra Chapman, who's mm -hmm. the lead actor who's Korean Australian so we had a lot of really great conversations about what we wanted to do with the material that we were inspired by um that's yeah that's kind of uh the more we researched and the more I spoke about it with my supervisors the more these kind of ideas just seem to work naturally with the story uh, that's really cool um so you mentioned prosthetics and blood Mm. Tell us more because we are huge like effects fans. How how do the prosthetics fit in? Oh. What do they do? <laughs> Tell us everything. What was the best thing to make? What was the most satisfying what thing, is the to best film? thing to make? That's a good question <laughs> because it's always like the shrub. It's just, it's just... <laughs> well, I can't take credit for any of it. So I'm sure I'm not the only one where you're writing and you're getting your ideas down and you just forget that there are limitations. You forget that some things like how are you going to actually pull it off? So um, I was writing kind of these more gruesome moments in the screenplay and I was very lucky in that I got to meet Russell Sharp from Sharp FX, which is a prosthetic company here in Melbourne. Um, and he and his team, um, Katie and Tanya, they, they, they brought all the fake blood, like, punnets of like fake blood um, a fire extinguisher filled with blood they brought all these kind of fantastic um prosthetics that we got to use and they did it all on set because i wouldn't have a clue Whoa. what to do but it was just great to be able to watch from the side and see how it how it's done um, that's fantastic oh, so how like I it want sounds a mate who will just turn up with buckets of blood on request um so obviously it sounds like it's going to look incredible from the effect, but like how much does it actually look like how you pictured it looking and like how much was it altered by those limitations that you had to consider? Or that um, surprised you? So these, these, there's this one moment with the prosthetic that was, you know, it was such a huge undertaking and I think it's in the film for about two seconds. So I get really excited about these ideas, but in the final film, they're really kind of small snippets and I'm so mm. grateful are uh, in there. Um, the film is obviously, I think, um, 
the film that I wrote is completely different from the film that we shot, which is completely different from the film that we edited. Um, mm. And I think that's really wonderful because I think all this change happens because you're working with other people. I think that's how it's meant to happen. You know, you have to kind of, I was really, I had a really amazing cast and crew and everyone just uh, had their own skills and talents and changed things as we went along. So it was really great to see it change uh, throughout the process. So, yeah. <laughs> fantastic that's wonderful um so now that you have a final product what mm. do you hope people take away from it Whoa. Um, <laughs> it's so selfish isn't it just your film being like i don't, don't want them. No. just want them to like it <laughs> it's not a feel-good film but i i really like watching horror films and kind of being left feeling a bit tired or cathartic because you, because horror is so great at making you feel like you're on this roller coaster um so i i guess uh, everyone will take something different um especially depending on their own experiences in life but i hope that people in enjoy it as being a, a not so happy film <laughs> yeah um how are you finding being at grimfest so far I am so excited. I am obviously Grimfest is a huge, exciting, wonderful festival. Um, and just ha- being in contact with the people behind it, they're so lovely um, and they're so supportive. And seeing how they program the films, I found really interesting. I think their their schedule just works perfectly. There's this wonderful balance between films that have similar themes or concepts, but then completely different subgenres. Like I think I think mine's playing along with two features in a short, and there's zombies in there, but then there's also um, other films to do with motherhood, which is kind of where mine um, taps into. So I just think it's been really exciting to see how they do it and their program. Oh, that's fantastic. That's phenomenal. I'm so excited to see all the shorts. So I, we've just got our Austra- we've just got our strainers. It's just gonna be a night. I can't wait. <laughs> 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 I, yeah, I thought I was going to, but then I just realised because of geo blocking, I might not be able to. So I have to try and just track everyone down and try and find another way. Aww. <laughs> Hunt them down. <laughs> Show us your film. Do some casual stalking. <laughs> Kevin wants to get involved. Okay, well, okay. You know what? He's not been on for the entire time. Meet Kevin. Hello. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> She did. Uh, this is uh, she is taught heaven. She's the love of my life. And get off the keyboard, you want you. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> I would love to have had a cat in every horror film I've ever made, but I feel like it would be a disaster. I imagine they're impossible. Like, I, every time yeah. I see a cat in a horror film and it does what it's meant to do, I don't know how they do it. It's like <laughs> I've I've heard food. I have a friend who's a cat trainer and she's like, dogs, you can train with affection. Cats, it's food or they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, that works for me. <laughs> yeah, and yeah me same, so same. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do anything um, for a starny. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've uh, come to the end of our time with you. Thank you so much for coming on our show for a little chat. Um, pleasure. You must be exhausted. <laughs> it has been in a good way. <laughs> it has been two hours that has like flown by, and I'm gonna yeah. feel the hit of it yep. probably as soon as we get off the call. Um, <laughs> thank you so much so for coming fun. on. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, oh, of course, it's been a pleasure having you as well. And obviously, you can catch um, the thoughts at Grimfest on Friday, the second of April at six pm. Ooh. So please Thank do you. one more time. Should I just I just leave? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank so you. just leave. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you, Kate. Thank Bye. you so much for coming on. Bye. <laughs>